This video provides an overview of cardiac arrest rhythms and how we manage them according to the 2020 ACLS algorithms, especially in an EMS setting. I will divide this, just as the AHA does on their cardiac arrest algorithm, into two parts, shockable and non-shockable rhythms. This is part one, shockable rhythms. The shockable rhythms include ventricular tachycardia without a pulse and ventricular fibrillation. In my video on ventricular rhythms, I cover the details of identifying VTAC, so I won't repeat those here. But if we determine that our patient is in VTAC and has no pulse, we manage it exactly the way we do VFib, because both of these situations can be potentially converted to a productive rhythm with early defibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation is one of the easiest rhythms to identify because there is absolutely no rhythm and none of the waveforms we normally look for and measure. There are no P waves or QRS complexes because what we are seeing on the monitor is showing us the evidence of electrical chaos throughout the ventricles. This results in no functional contractions and no cardiac output. You will sometimes hear VFib described as either coarse or fine, and where you draw the line is very subjective. The important point here is that the size or amplitude of what you see on the tracing reflects the electrical energy and activity in the heart. The more activity we see, the more likely that defibrillation will be effective. VFib and pulseless VTAC are the only shockable rhythms, so if you find your patient in these rhythms at any point, defibrillation is your immediate priority. After defibrillation, we do not wait to see if it worked. We immediately start CPR. Even if defibrillation is successful, the heart at this point is likely to need the support that CPR provides for at least a couple minutes, and we build our resuscitation strategy around two-minute cycles of CPR. During the first cycle of CPR, we should establish IV access. The AHA recommends IV as the first option and intraosseous as an alternative if an IV can't be established. At the end of every two-minute cycle of CPR, we should have our defibrillator precharged, pause CPR just long enough to assess the rhythm, deliver a shock if still indicated, and immediately resume CPR. This is also a good time to switch out the person doing compressions. If at any of these assessment points you discover that your patient is no longer in a shockable rhythm, but still in cardiac arrest, we move to the other side of the cardiac arrest algorithm, which I will cover in part two. If at any point we determine that our patient has a return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC, we go to the ROSC algorithm, designed to help us keep that positive outcome. If still in a shockable rhythm, in the next cycle we should administer 1.0 milligrams of epinephrine and consider an advanced airway, including a capnography assessment. Epi can be repeated every three to five minutes, but since we are doing two-minute cycles, it makes perfect sense to simply give it every four minutes, which is every other cycle. The second drug we administer to shockable rhythms is either amiodarone or lidocaine, and we give one of those antidysrhythmic drugs in the next cycle following our first epi administration. The initial dose of amiodarone is 300 milligrams, and the initial dose of lidocaine is 1 to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, or approximately 100 milligrams for an average adult. One important note here, if your patient is in torsade de poing, a specific form of polymorphic VTAC, which is often just labeled torsades, neither amiodarone nor lidocaine are likely to be effective, and magnesium sulfate is given instead at a dose of 1 to 2 grams. At the end of the cycle, we assess again, shock if indicated, and repeat our epinephrine in the next cycle. In the following cycle, we will give our second and final dose of our antidysrhythmic drug, and with either amiodarone or lidocaine, your second dose is half the initial amount. At this point, if our patient remains in a shockable rhythm, we continue our two-minute cycles of CPR, and every other cycle we can give another dose of epinephrine. We continue this effort until the rhythm changes, until we get ROSC, or until a decision is made to terminate efforts. Here's the rapid-fire summary for shockable rhythms. Do good CPR and shock immediately, and do two-minute cycles of CPR. Get an IV, shock, epinephrine, advanced airway, shock, 
amiodarone or lidocaine, shock, epi, shock, amiodarone or lidocaine, shock, and then continue CPR, shocking, and epi of our other cycle until we aren't on this algorithm anymore. In cardiac arrest part two, I will outline the strategies for our non-shockable rhythms.